happy Sabbath, happy day. Thank you very much and welcome again to our Vespers, that is a Saturday evening, AMR Sabbath. And uh, the one speaking who will minister to you today is uh, Brother Jeremiah Migom. Our title for our study today is entitled Bitter Sweet Love. Bitter Sweet Love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who lives above, we come unto you again this wonderful moment that we want to adore your name, uplift your name, even as we listen to you speak to us. We want to open your holy word that we may get understanding in it. How we ask that may you come down and minister to us for this we ask trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Bitter, sweet love. In, in the Bible, there are a number of people in the Bible. There are the major names that are talked about in the Bible. And uh, there are some which are not much talked about, but we can learn something from them. And today, I want us to learn from a lady. And this is a lady by the name Michal. Michal is the daughter of Saul. Saul who was a king. Now this is the daughter of Saul who was after his first daughter who is Mirab. Michal's story is found in the book of First Samuel chapter 18 going henceforth. And so it is a story that has a number of things that we ought to learn today. And uh, it reminds me of what is happening in the Adventist Muslim relations system and history, especially in the Central Kenya Conference. In the past few months, we had a very, very sad experience when we lost one of us. And uh, by, the, by saying lost means that he left our fold and also died thereafter. And this is none other than Ustade Dundi. He ministered to us in church here in Dono, and uh, many of us were touched by the message which the Lord had bestowed on him. And so uh, many a times we ask ourselves, why is it that somebody leaves the church? Why is it that a number of us may decide to leave the church? It, it is because there is a conflict. There is a fight, there is a wrestle between our heart, in, inside our hearts. There's an expectation that we have, and there's, a, uh, there's the reality that dawns in us. And all this is because maybe there is some bitter, sweet love. Mikael is the daughter of Saul, and now Mikael was eyeing David. This is just after David had already been accepted uh, into the army and was amongst the army soldiers in Saul's kingdom. And then, now, one time when now David had come out of a war field and they were victorious, and then the women of Israel, by then it was divided, now we are talking about Judah which was on the north, and then the entire Israel was on the south. Now Judah, after the victory in a war led by David, then the women started celebrating, and they shouted, saying, Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. And now this made Saul to be envious. This made Saul to be jealous. And therefore Saul purported in his heart that he has... He desires to try and make David not become a king. Why? Because he thought that David will take kingship from him. And so he decided to give Merab to David. But David decided to take Merab. Now in this scenario, when he was planning to give Merab to David, then I'm thinking of Michael and Michael because he already loved David. 
And in, in 1 Samuel 18, we realize in the early chapters that him and Jonathan, the brother, loved David so much. And so I am saying we can, because he loved David, but the dad wants to give David to Merab, his, her elder sister, then he is and he becomes sad. He is troubled in his heart. How will it be that the one whom I love is being taken away? But David did not accept the offer. And so Mera becomes happy that again David has not taken the offer. Why did David not take the offer? Because David thought that with his background, then he cannot become who cannot marry a king's daughter because he, he is not worthy of marrying a king's daughter. Now, leave that aside because our study today is focused on Mirab. Later on, Mirab now is to get married. So, he had planned to give out, sorry, it is now Michal who is to get married. So, he had planned to give Mirab to David. But then David refused. Therefore, because of that, he decided to give away Mirab to someone else. And so the opportunity now remains for Michal. And then Saul realizes that Michal loves David, and David also loves Michal. And so he sees an opportunity where he can use this chance to get what he wanted. And therefore, because he wanted to read out David, he decides now to give a dowry, a dowry that was unexpected. I don't know what benefit did was Saul expecting to get on getting a dowry worth of a hundred false kings of Palestinian soldiers. And that was the dowry that he asked for. Very interesting. One hundred false kings of Philistian soldiers. Remember, our title is Bitter Sweet Love. And so, Michael gets the story, gets the information, and he become, she becomes sad. How? How will David get 100 false kings of Philistian soldiers? That meant a lot of going to the extreme. As in, how can you go? That means circumcising soldiers more than 100 to get the four skins. But interesting enough, David went with his soldiers and he was able to bring more than 100 four skins of the Philistian soldiers. And so, Michael is happy. David has made it. And now we have to get married. We have to leave. And on the other side, Saul was disappointed because in his mind, he knew that when David goes, or goes for this, goes for the hundred foreskin, it is probably that he will go and he will be killed. That was the same mind he had when he was giving out Mirab, the sister to Michael. Why? Because he knew he, the proposal he had was that when David accepts, then he takes David to be in the forefront of the soldiers so that he can be killed. Ask yourself, is there a time that you took advantage of somebody in order to, in, in order to get some advantage for yourself? Many a times, we, we take the position that we have just as soon as he was the king to thwart or to, to inflict some pain to others. Even our parents, many a times, when your daughter has somebody whom he loves, whom she loves, then many a times you take the advantage when the dowry time comes that you want to calculate all the expenses you laid on your daughter, and now you want to redeem it with an extra profit. Ask yourself, how many times do I take advantage of someone for my own benefit? So this was the same position that Saul was. Therefore, Saul was not indifferent with us. Many of us also are in the same position. But God wants us of that, that indeed it is not good 
it is not good, it is not right to take advantage over your fellow brethren. How then can you say that you love him? The same way you love yourself. Ask yourself, if you were in his shoes, would it be right if he did to you what you're planning to do to him or her? And so that was what Paul opted for. But then everything went amiss. And so his plans failed. And therefore, David and Michael got married. But yet Saul did not end up at that position. At that end, he decided he must plan again to kill David. And so he went and planned with his soldiers, and they went to Saul to, to David's house over the night and waited outside so that when David in the, when the morning comes in the, in the dawn of the of the morning, that he may come, they may come in and kill David. And so Michael, Michael saw that indeed the soldiers were around and realized because he knew how much Saul hated David. And so he told David. And that very night they planned and he took, he sent David out through the windows, drew him down, and then David escaped in the night. I'm, I'm trying to see myself at the, at, 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 the, at the shoes of Mika, the person whom you love. You love so much. All the challenges were all over you. And he was victorious over all the challenges. And now we are, you are here, a loved family, joined together in holy matrimony. But yet still, before you enjoy your marriage, then your loved one, runs away. He runs for his life. You save his life. The heart that was once attached together feels the pain of departing, of saying bye in a condition or a situation which is not welcoming, which is not acceptable, which you, you don't have power over. And so, Michal is sad. David goes. She never knows when again will she meet David. Maybe after Saul is dead, and she never know if David will come back alive or not. But interestingly enough, years and years went. By the way, before they could meet, after the, the incidents, then uh, in the morning he welcomes the soldiers after he had prepared a, an, a doll and placed it where David was slept on the bed and prepared some goat skin, goat hair, and made like the hair of this doll. And so when the soldiers came in the morning, knocked, he opened, she opened, and they asked, where is David? And they say, then she told them, she's ill sleeping. And so they went and found the doll, and so they called Saul and told him that we have found David. And Saul says that may bring him alive so that I may kill him. And they take the doll. But on the way they realize it is just a doll. They were lied to. And they give report to Saul, a uh, report to Saul, and then Saul asks the daughter. He asks the daughter this question. That why have you defended my enemy and enabled him to escape from me. Brothers and sisters, before we go ahead, you might be found in a situation where Michael was found, and therefore we may opt to lie as Michael lied, saying that David was sick, yet he had sent David, he had made an escape, she had made an escape for David. Does this mean that we ought to lie? Hell no. The Bible does not allow us to lie in any situation. For you do not know what plan God has for you in that situation. Therefore, you ought not to take things in your hand, but allow the power of God and his ways to reign. And therefore, in Hebrews 11, 
31 and Romans 13, 10 gives us and emphasizes to us that indeed we ought not to lie. Because of time, we won't go to read those verses, but you can go in your, in your own time and study them. Let us go back to our study. Still in Michal. Now, because Michal did this, Saul decided to, to give away Michal to another person. Sad enough that your own father who gave birth to you, who raised you, who wants the best for you, gives you away to somebody else, yet you're already married. I can't imagine of how Mikhail is feeling. The love of his life just escaped in an weird situations. Then the father now wants to give him out again to somebody called Piatal. Paltiel was the, 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 the person who Saul now gave Mikhail to. We don't know if Mikhail loved her, but it is certain that indeed Paltiel, Paltiel loved Mikhail. And this is evidence when now, later on in the story, we realize how much Paltiel loved Mikhail. But Michal and Patiel have a life, enjoyable life. They stay a peaceful life. We don't hear of any, any misconduct or push and pull in their marriage thereafter. But here is David, after going away, years and years have gone. Then in a war, Saul is killed together with his sons, whom he lost with in, 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 in the war. These are Abinadam. Malkisha and Jonathan. And so all of them are dead. Then now David takes charge. David becomes the king of Israel, now in the, in the, in the kingdom of Judah. On the other kingdom, we have Ish Bophosheth as the king. But Ish Bophosheth is not a strong king, he's a weak king. Why do we say he's a weak king? Because his soldier, his lead soldier, manipulates everything in his kingdom. And his lead soldier is none other than Abna. Therefore, the, Luther, the southern kingdom decides to make an agreement with the southern kingdom. And before they, they decide what to agree and to talk, before Abna goes to talk to King David, King David sends messengers to Ishbifosheth, the king, and tells the king that I want my wife back. And therefore later, just to make the story short, the king had no option, but he had to bring back Mikal. Mikal, I can see Mikal and Paltiel in the marriage in the house, enjoying the peaceful day, then the soldiers arrive with an order from above, which you always know when the policemen say order from above, you can't ask. It is order from above. <laughs> Amazingly, that order from above is even in the systems and institutions, even in our churches. And so, Mikhail is taken away from the husband, Paltiel. It is a sad, sad occasion. Michael lost the first husband, parted away from the first husband in a very weird situation, uncontrollable to him, to her. Michael is given to Paltiel, the second husband, by the father, something that he cannot control. And now again, when she is enjoying marriage, again, she's taken away from her husband back to David. I can't imagine what is running in the mind of Michael. But in this situation, we see Paltiel, the husband, follows her back every step, a distance, until Abner orders him to go back. And all this time, the husband is crying. Ask yourself, have you ever found yourself in such situation where the condition or what brought you to that condition 
or that state, it's uncontrollable in your way, in your ability. What do you do next? What do you do next? Paltiel is crying. They're taking away the wife. Order is from the king. What can he do? We are today in Kenya in the world. COVID is all over. Life is terrible. People have lost their jobs. Some have been forced out of jobs. Some have been forced out, forced out of houses. What can you do in that situation? Some were locked in Nairobi for more than three months with nowhere to go, no where to live. What can you do in that situation? The kids that we have also wish to study more, continue further their studies, but then there are no more schools. You are in your house, maybe with a guardian, maybe without a guardian, maybe by yourself, but you are there. Some in the rural areas have no even access to this digital education. Yet your friends are studying. In that condition, what do you do? Bitter, sweet love. Mikhail, in that condition, comes back to the husband, but she becomes bitter. Thereafter, you see a, con a continuation of events which shows that he was bitter. And therefore, she did not accept her situation. She was sad because of what had happened to her life. And when David comes out victorious in one of the wars, and then she is dressed by an effort, linen effort, and dancing outside, this saddens Mikhail, Mikhail, that Mikhail tells David that how are you disgracing yourself in front of your maid servants? What am I trying to bring across the uh, brethren, those who are online, those who are listening wherever you are, that uh, whenever, whatever situation that we find ourselves in, when we are unable to control, then there's somebody who can control that situation. Praise God. There's one man who can control that situation. And he tells us in Isaiah 61, verses 1, and these are the words of the Lord, that the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me, listen to this part of this verse, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive, and release for the dark, from darkness for the prisoners. Now, this is very wonderful news. This is very wonderful information. This is the good news, the news of hope to all of us, that when we are in a situation where we find ourselves hopeless, then the word of God, which was sent through Isaiah, proclaiming of the one who will come later, which is Jesus Christ, that he will come, and his mission is specifically to give good news to the poor, to send the blind, the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captive, and also to release darkness to the prisoners. God wants to release us from our afflictions. What do you remember these words and run to him? Mikhail never ran, and you never hear in any part of the story that Mikhail ran to Jesus. Mikhail was sorrowful. Conditions were sad to him, but she never ran to Jesus. And in the end, what happens? The story ends very sad that she never even had a child. And in the entire story, she is referred to, this, to the daughter of Saul, and not to the wife, as the wife of David. So, where we run to determines our end. Michal decided to be sorrowful, and that was it. He didn't run to God. But all those who run to Jesus get salvation. Therefore, as we end, I want to read these statements here as we end our Vespers. Brothers and sisters, that there is hope. Whenever the condition is, if you are experiencing the bitter sweet love, there's only one 
who will make the love sweeter than honey, and that is Jesus. We are all subject to circumstances beyond our control. It's how we respond to them that, that matters. To put it another way, it's not what comes to your way that matters, but it's what, how you handle what comes to your way. May the Lord help us that in any situation that we go through, we may remember that there's one person who will make our bitterness become sweet, who will make our bitter love become a sweet love. May God bless us all. Let us pray. Our Father and our God who lives high above, thank you so much for your love and care. Thank you so much for your message unto us that you are the only one who makes that which is bitter to be sweet as honey. And your love is not bitter, but your love is a sweet love. Help us, O oh Lord, that whenever we experience a bitter love, that we may run to you so that we may experience the sweet love from above. That which may make us speak even in the storm of darkness, that it is well with our soul. So God, help us renew our spirit, renew our spirit, set of mind, that we may not be shaken from you, that we may focus to the cross and the cross alone, so that your salvation may be full and free and clear and complete in our lives. This we ask, trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed Sabbath day.